Hello everyone, a very warm welcome back to MetTech. We're back out on the drive as you can see and we are going to do a couple more jobs on the little C1 today. We have got finally some new wheel centres for it which we actually need to sort of assemble. I'll show you in a minute. And we're going to put the side stripes on it which I've been waiting to do for absolutely ages because obviously I wanted to get all the other bits and bobs like the bumpers and the valet, valet and detail and whatever else all done first to make the outside look nice before I put on the side stripes. So without further ado, let's not waffle on, let's crack on, get some work done and make this thing look even more, I don't want to, I don't want to say sporty because it's not sporty but make it look better anyway. <laughs> let's crack on. Right, this is what I've come up with for the C1 wheel centres. Now after going through four different sets of centre caps, I finally found some that actually fit, um, which is obviously good and don't break. Now the first set I bought was a genuine Citroen set, which disintegrated instantly. I'll put a photo on the screen of that in a second. Um, the second two sets didn't fit properly. The measurements weren't accurate on the size of the clips on the back. So I sent those back again. And I've ended up with these, which are the cheapest ones on Amazon. I think they're about six quid. And then I bought these Citroen badges separately on eBay. They were about seven and a half quid, I think seven pound fifty, something like that. Originally I was going to get red centers to match the bodywork, um, but everyone I went to to get red centers, they were out of stock, not available, problem with the order, whatever else. So in the end I've gone for black ones. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a scotch pad and I'm going to scotch up the centers of these. So obviously they're mega shiny at the moment, which means, yeah, the, the Citroen badges will stick, but they won't have a lot to adhere to. So I'm just going to go over these with a scotch pad like that pretty uh, self-explanatory really so that they're all matte you can see that's sort of going a bit matte now try and get into the edges as best you can well I don't want to go too far into the edges actually because these badges are fractionally smaller by about a mil so you will see the very edge of that chrome or as long as the majority of it is scuffed up to obviously allow that to stick properly that should be alright Hopefully that will make these me scotch pads getting stuck to this microfiber. You can see there it's quite sort of a, a matte finish now. So I just wanted to get a nice few little scratches in there to allow that to stick on. Now what I'm going to do as well to hopefully aid these in sticking is I'm going to get a heat gun and just warm up these badges slightly so that the sticky on the back becomes that little bit more sticky. You tend to find I've had it before in the past where I've actually got instructions with things like this and they say to warm them up slightly to obviously uh, aid it sticking so that is what I'm going to do these centres didn't say that but I'm going to go with uh, previous experience on that and obviously uh, go with that so let me get a heat gun and I'll come back to you in just a second right got my heat gun sorted out with this one all scuffed up I'm just going to give it a little wipe over with a little bit of panel wipe just to obviously uh, get rid of any dust and grease that could be on there. Again, then I need to give it the best stick it can. I've got my heat gun here. I'll get one of these. You obviously they've just got a peelable backing on them. So what I'll probably do is peel the back off first, then heat it, I reckon. Just make sure I want to get the heat gun on that. And just make sure that's dry. See it instantly evaporate that stuff, it's really good. Oh, that's dry. I'm only going to go low heat on this. Get this off of here. Like that. Give it a little bit of heat. As much as your fingers can bear, because obviously the heat gun is fairly hot. enough just give it a little gentle bit of warmth obviously get it as central as you can and basically you've got one go at this well in theory you've got one go at it I'm gonna get a blade I haven't pushed that down yet as you would have seen 
and, do, and because I've not pushed it down, I'm hoping I can just edge it over slightly. Yeah, I can. It's not quite central. There we go, that's better. Once you're obviously happy with where it's stuck, or it's sitting, I should say, like that, then you push it down. And this has got a protective film over this, so hopefully it'll look a bit better than this in a second. Just obviously make sure that it's proper stuck down. Hopefully it will. Right, now you can see if I get a blade under the edge of this, it's got a film over it. And get that off. Without scratching it. There you go, look at that, that looks really really nice actually, really quite chuffed with that. So basically I'm going to repeat that another three times and then we should be okay to put them on the car. Top banana. Right, let's see what these look like now they're um, all stuck together. What I've done is I've just run a little bit of wet and dry around that inner edge there to give it a nice clean surface to click into. So hopefully these will just click in nice. He says with any luck. I don't want to go too mad with them. Try and put them in fairly evenly so they click in. There you go. Look at that. Slightly off. Uh, kilter but they look lovely really finished the wheel off nice so I'm gonna click the other three of those in and then that is another little job ticked off the list top banana there we go that is all four wheel centers clicked in makes a massive difference to those wheels really does look nice I know the wheels aren't perfect and they will be refurbished at some point but for now that has made a lovely job of that why has it always got a plane flying over whenever i try and record <laughs> anyway on to the next job i think that's going to be the side stripes let's carry on right i've come inside for a second this is the next part of the little c1 that we're going to do which as i said is the side stripes this is how they come i'll show you on one roll and there's obviously two stripes on here and what I'm going to do first of all, I think, is obviously cut them in half, because obviously I can't apply both on one side, and I'm going to measure how much distance is between the top of the decal and the paper, and the bottom of the decal and the paper, and replicate that on the other one, if that makes sense. So try and get them basically so they're exactly the same size, which will then help me when I'm trying to align them on the car, I can align them to the edge of the paper rather than them to guess. That's the thinking anyway. Um, so they're the decals. They come from a company called Mint Graphics. Should show you that there. And it gives you the application details there. It says to start, tape it on with masking tape, put tape down the middle of it, um, peel off one side and cut the backing paper off. Then obviously get that side on and then do the other same with the other side. Now I did, it didn't come with anything to apply it, so I've gone on Amazon and I bought a pair of, I need one obviously, but I bought a pair of felt squeegees and a scalpel. Um, and obviously then that would allow me to smooth them out nice and obviously cut them where I need to. So I'm going to work on that, get those cut out, I'm going to measure it all out, draw on them, cut it all out, make sure they're the same, and then we can go outside, get them fitted on the car.
Right, there we go. I've got those two cut out. Now the top on this one is slightly taller, but what I've actually done is I've gone to done gone to the bottom edge. So the, both the bottoms of these decals from the bottom of the stripe to the edge of the paper are the same. They're 1.5 centimeters or 15 mil if you want to go in millimeters. And the bottom of the one to the edge of the paper is five mil. So they are both the same bottom of decal to bottom of paper. So that is what I'm going to go by. Um, and obviously I can place it on the car in the same place using the bottoms of the decals as a, a guide as such. So let's get outside, get the car on the drive. I'm going to wipe it down with some panel wipe, wax and grease remover to obviously remove any contaminants and the wax that I put on in the last video in the areas that we need to. Um, and then obviously we'll get these taped on. We'll apply them like they tell us to. Hopefully it'll go all right and then we can re-wax those areas again after on the car and it should look absolutely marvellous. Let's carry it. Yeah, can't talk. Let's carry on. Right, we're out on the car, as you can see. Now, the sort of position I'm thinking this is going to go in is something like that. Um, I know you can't see the entirety of the stripe on the uh, camera at the moment, but that is the sort of position I'm thinking. So I think I'm going to come up from the bottom of the door probably about... 10 mil maybe 15 mil not too much um, and that should look really quite nice hopefully um, obviously I'll get it positioned on the door as best I can I'm going to try and do it so that I can cut through one of the decals on the between the door and the quarter that so to make it sure I've got a decent bit to cut through if that makes sense rather than just a tiny little bit that's going to come off on its own that is the thinking so I'm going to get a few bits of masking tape um, put in the right places and uh, obviously then go from there on getting it all in the right position and stick it stuck on let's carry on right that is the position I think I'm going to go for I've gone from two centimeters from the bottom of the door and when you push that to the door it is all um, in line as such so I think that's going to look fairly good there it's not going to be too close to the bottom it's going to look quite nice and I've got a reasonable amount to cut through here to be able to transfer it to going from the court panel from the door to the court panel so they tell you on the kit on these instructions it says uh, place a single piece of masking tape across the middle of the stripe then you take one end off peel the backing off and cut it off halfway to leave you with just the front paper and the decal and then you squeegee it from the middle out obviously so you don't get any air bubbles um, and in theory should all look alright um, so that is what I'm going to do I'm going to try and do this side live so you can see what I'm doing and obviously uh, hopefully it'll go all right <laughs> if it don't then I'm stuffed so, not actually put anything on like this before this is the first time so it should be interesting by the way I have already panel wiped this did that off camera so I wouldn't forget So now I've put that in the middle there, it's saying you take the take this side off, pull the backing paper off. But before I do that, let's go and get this knife undone and I can cut the backing paper. I've got the packet undone. goes horribly wrong I'm sorry <laughs> you're supposed to pull this backing paper off here these are black these decals by the way to go with the uh, all the other black bits on the car so hopefully they'll look all right so you don't want to pull them off I'll try and pull them off sort of at the same angle so that it doesn't pull it off the front paper if that makes sense Right, 
So you get to that point, and you cut the backing paper. Hopefully this is sharp enough to just cut through this. But I haven't got anything else to hold it with. Yeah, that's a bit of luck. Right. Cut the backing paper off. And then, get your felt squeegee. And you squeegee it along, hopefully it'll be in line now. I'm assuming this is going to go right. We shall see. dubious about this because I, don't, I really wanted to get one end of it on so I knew it was in line with the markings you know doing it hopefully it will work out all right what I'm actually going to do is take this middle bit of tape off now it's tricky this <coughs> I'm going to tape it on the bottom edge Take that bit off of there. So that can then if this works and doesn't go wrong, I should be very, very pleased because this is one of those, those jobs that I've been putting off, if I'm honest. Because I didn't know how it was going to go. this is going to work because I think it's going to all go wrong otherwise please be in line with where I want it to be You want to distort the decal either because keep putting it on and off, it's not going to like it. Well, it's on, it's roughly in the right place. <laughs> now, the other end's going to be a bit easier because obviously, we've already got the main part stuck on, if that makes sense. So, you can't really go wonky now. Make sure this is all pushed down nice, with no air bubbles in it. And now I can take this end off. It should follow along from where I've just done, if that makes sense. So now I've got to take the backing paper off this half. trust in the method that they sell you because theory it can't go wrong <laughs> famous last words I know but in theory it can't go wrong see what I want to do this without this felt squeegee this is really good See, 
that has gone up slightly there. So there's not really a lot I can do about that now. So. It's only very fractional, so hopefully it looks alright. Right, this is very nerve-wracking, I have to say. Very nerve-wracking indeed. Right, now in theory, I've done this how they've said, I shouldn't have any air bubbles behind it. Whether I have or I haven't, is going to be found out right now <laughs> when you pull this off you want to do it flat with the bodywork if that makes sense because otherwise it'll just pull the sticker back off again you see that in camera here yeah. please be in please be all right please be all right please be all right Few little bubbles there, not too bad. Might be able to push those out. So I'll go over all this again with the felt squeegee once this paper's off. We'll be able to see exactly what it's uh, looking like. It's looking alright so far. Again, these can be worked out, I'm hoping. If not, I'll just get, put a little pinprick in the end of them with the scalpel and hopefully that'll get rid of any bubbles. I'm quite liking the way it's looking though. It's pretty good. I wasn't sure how this was going to come out to be honest, but it's alright. Unfortunately there are a few little scuffs and bits and bobs on the paintwork right where I put the decals, but that can't be helped. There we go, it's on. Yeah, let's uh, just go along now and it's hopefully be better. If I can't push these out then I'll uh, as I say I'll just use a scalpel and just pierce them. So basically I'm going to spend a bit of time just going over this now, making sure that it's all stuck down and there's no air bubbles. I can't see any mega thing. Yeah, I mean that is only a small decal so it shouldn't have, shouldn't have any really, but as I say, not having done this before to this extent. Anyway, I put on small decals but I've not put anything like a stripe before. So yeah, I'm going to spend a bit of time just going over this. I'll come back to you once it's done. Right, there we go. That is that side all done. I've given it a quick coat of wax as well, just over the top of that decal, just so it's got a bit back over it again where I use the panel wipe. I'm pretty pleased with that it's come out. It's not too bad. I'm just moving back a bit so you can see. So now I've got to do exactly the same on the other side, and it should be all looking rather good. Let's carry on.
there we go that is the second side all done as you can see I don't know how long these are going to last as far as whether they're going to peel or not because there's obviously a lot of sharp corners on these which I'll show you you'll see what I mean like this one here for example is just starting to lift um, I'm having to push the corners down and obviously just give them a little bit of extra sort of welly you know um, so yeah I don't know how long it's going to last this, this bit here is a bit of a troublesome bit as well on the door I've had to cut it obviously the bit on the quarter folds in so that's alright but that bit on the door I'm not sure about but anyway we'll have to see how long it lasts if it doesn't if it starts peeling off then maybe we'll have to get a different designer stripe that maybe is one continuous stripe so that it's got more chance of staying on there but that was the design I picked initially so that is what we've got so hopefully it should stay on there if not we'll be doing it again in a little while but it didn't actually take too long I thought it'd take a lot longer than that but it's not too bad at all so there we go another job ticked off the list right next little job on the c1 i want to do is kind of self-inflicted really because obviously i've put these nice wheels on and now you can see through the spokes the drums are letting the side down quite a lot so i'm going to buzz these back wheels off take those drums off and give them a tidy up with a coat of uh, black just to uh, tidy them up a bit so when you look through the wheels they're not looking so manky so let's get this jacked up get the wheels off and uh get those sorted out now another little problem i want to sort out it's not really a problem but you can see on the wheels there the residue of the old glue from which had wheel weights on before i've actually bought myself what i call a toffee wheel which is like a rubber wheel that you can put in a drill and it gets off all sticky stuff like that so whilst we've got the wheels off i'm going to get those cleaned up as well so you don't see all manky old glue through the wheels as well that is the plan so let's get this up in the air and uh, get this sorted out and look it looking a bit more tidy right here as you can see with the wheel off these are looking pretty manky and they're held on with just one torx um, little screw there so let's hope this comes undone easily yep a bit of luck you take that off now I've not actually had the drums off of this before so it's going to be interesting to see what sort of condition it's in inside well that came off really easy I'm quite sure how easy that came off there doesn't appear to be any leakage in there pads or the shoes I should say all look in good condition so that is absolutely superb so and there's not really any lip on these either on the inside of them they're really in good condition so that's great I'm not 100% sure you've got a little adjuster in here I may adjust them out slightly because I have built the handbrake is a little bit high so while we're in here I might as well adjust them out so what I'm going to do I want to get both of these taken off just like you've just seen there get them all cleaned up with a wire brush and a grinder and then give them a coat of probably black I'm going to give them a go black stone chip, I think, the same as I did with the um, arms on the cab when I did those, because that came out quite nice. I don't. I was going to go for red, but I thought it might be a bit over the top, and I ain't 18 anymore, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm borderline being 18 as it is with the things I'm doing to this car, so, you know. Let's, uh, let's get the other one off, and uh, we'll get these rubbed down and painted.
right as you would have just seen they are all ground back with the uh, angle grinder wire brush it took some doing that and pretty grand on so now i'm going to give it a quick go over with some panel wipe just to get the grease and mank off technical term that is mank go around it like that i've got these sitting on a couple of old paint tins so it spaces them off the ground slightly so i can get to that bit underneath hopefully with the paint and what I'm going to do is give them a coat, a light, very light coat of etch primer first, just to give it a bit of a key. And then obviously we can go over after with the black stone chip. That stuff pretty much sticks to everything anyway, but I just want to make sure. So, right. I just noticed that paint can has got all leaves in the top of it. Hopefully that won't affect it. I'll put it underneath. Right, let's get our etch. Give it a light coat of this. We are out in the sun, so hopefully it will dry fairly easily. It's only going to be a, I say, a very light coat of that. That will probably take about five minutes to dry, I suppose. Same with this one. out in the sun. This stuff dries mega quick. I mean that was almost dry on this one already. So there we go. That's our etch on there. I'll let that go off for a sec. And then we'll go over it with the black. Love you, Jubbly. Radio, whilst we are waiting for our brake drums to dry, I've got the toffee wheel out. And the reason this is called a toffee wheel is because when you use it, it smells like toffee. It comes with a little adapter which screws on the back, and that allows you to put it into your drill chuck. That just goes in, oh, drop it on the floor, goes in like a normal drill bit, like that, and then we get the back of our wheel. So you'll see what I mean if I tilt you down. See all the glue? Obviously, these are the weights. I've got glue here, glue here, glue here, glue here, up there, up here. Now, if a lot of good tire shops will take it off for you, but Clearly, this hasn't been taken to one of those sort of shops, so I'll show you exactly what it does, and then uh, I'll get cracking. As you can see, let's uh, see if we can work on it on the bottom there. You see, it's like a, it's almost like an eraser for sticky stuff. See, it sticks it all off, so it doesn't damage the paint. I find it work a little bit better once you've got a slight bit of wear on it because it's brand new, brand new at the moment so it's shuddering a lot but Gone slightly too far there and taking a little bit of paint off, but that's all right. So, there we go, that is our sticky stuff removed. So, I'm going to go around all the backs of the wheels like that, getting all these bits off. And that should look a lot better when you look through the spokes, then, especially with our nice new, freshly painted drums. I'll get this done and I'll come back to you.
Right, there we go. That is our brake drums all painted. They've had two coats of stone chip after that primer, and they've also had a coat of the satin lacquer as well. And that will dry, so they should be all good to go back on. I'm really chuffed with how those come out. So let's get them on the car and get the wheels back on. Right, I've given this little brush up in here just to get all the sort of loose brake dust off. There wasn't much in there, to be fair. I'm out of brake cleaner, unfortunately, so I can't give it a spray down. But what I've just done is flicked up this little adjuster. You can just see that little adjuster in there. Just flick that a few times up to click that out, obviously, to get a bit more adjustment on these drums. And now, when you put the drum on, you should be able to hear a very light drag, which is perfect. And I think you'll agree, those drums look lovely. Unfortunately, the back plates <laughs> show them up a bit now. Um, is a shame I don't really want to be taking all the brakes off just to paint those so we may have to either do them in situ or put up with it one or two so we've got a little grub screw we need to put back in and that goes on that recessed hole there basically the same as reverse of taking it off a little bit of paint build up around that middle bit and that just clicked on it's pushed it all off ideal anyway the wheel will cover that so that's okay all right we'll get that in there that's me ratchet going the other side of the car stay there so at least it looks mainly better when you look through the wheel There we go, just nip that up, you don't want to go too mad with it. And that should be top banana. Now I'm going to get a little bit of copper grease. You, you would have seen me in the time lapse um, wire brushing the middle of those wheels because they were very corroded and I didn't want all the, the corrosion to rub on my nice new paintwork. So um, I'm just going to give, put a little bit of copper grease on them to hopefully stop them sticking. And that should, uh, should be good. And right, so a little, little bit on the back of the wheel show you let's turn the camera around a bit there we go you can see the back of the wheel now this is the worst wheel out of the two as I said this has got a bit of corrosion on it but that's all right I mean copper grease tin's got copper grease all up the outside of it so that's not ideal and now the lid won't come off <laughs> doing well here Right, basically you just want to get a little bit on your finger, not much, and smear it on that face, because that will stop your alloy wheel sticking to the drum, which if you're at the side of the road and it's pouring a rain, and you need to change the wheel, you'll be very thankful for, because the last thing you want to do is you're messing around when you're in your best shirt and tie, or suit going to your mate's wedding or something and you've got to start kicking 10 bells out the back wheel to get it off or the front wheel for that matter so there we go <laughs> I'm waffling doesn't want a lot as I say just stops it from corroding a little bit and hopefully stop it sticking to that nice new painted drum that we've done alright let's get this put back on and see what it looks like Around. I don't see these wheels are refurb, it'll look even better, but for now it's going to be like this because I haven't got the money to do it at the moment. I think you'll agree. That is a marked improvement. Not perfect, I know. And I did go with the, um, the black stone chip because obviously it's got a slightly textured finish to it, which means that any of those little rust pits that were in that drum, obviously where I've buzzed it back, totally disappear because the whole drum is sort of a semi-textured finish, you know. So it's really good. Go easy on the locking nut. Do that one by hand, otherwise you'll end up with all sorts of problems. 
But there we go, look at that. That looks so much better when you look through the wheel. Really, really chuffed with that. See the grease slightly squeezing out the side of the wheel there, but that will, uh, I'll wipe that off in a bit of a cloth. But yeah, that looks really, really good in comparison to what it did look like. So that is top banana. <laughs> What do you think of that then? I think that looks absolutely mega. Considering this is a cheap car that was bought purely out of necessity at the time, it has turned into a really nice little car. I think with the side stripes, the wheel centers and the drums done, it does improve it a lot. Not only little jobs, but they really do make it sort of set it off nice. That is what I was going for. I didn't want it to be too over the top. I just wanted it to be sort of well looked after looking but subtle at the same time if that makes sense car guy things you know what i mean you look at a car and you think yeah i can kind of see he's a car guy you know he looks after his car i know it's only a c1 but you know it is what it is so i like it i think it's great it's great for bombing around in costs next to nothing to run so you know we've got one more possible modification to do on this i won't spoil it yet <sighs> catch on to that one did you um that's going to be in a future video um if you do like what you see make sure you do four things for me hit that like button subscribe most importantly share it with your friends if you think they like these sort of pro sorts of projects and hit that notification bell it'll tell you every time i upload a video whether it be on the c1 the cab the puma the free wheel van whatever there is a wide variety if you haven't seen my previous videos i'm up to a hunt this is the 101st video now so I've been doing a video a week now for well over, probably nearly two years now. So it's, a, it's a, quite a feat to do that, believe it or not. I know it doesn't seem like I do a lot, but <laughs> to do that random job and everything else is quite uh, quite challenging. But anyway, we're getting there. I've already said what I've said, so I'm not gonna go over that again. Make sure you look me up on Instagram, mech underscore tech 1985, and I have got this Facebook mech dash tech, for little sneak peeks, I can't talk today, but during the week, let me say that again, for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. And all it's left me to say is thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to join me soon for more automotive ventures, I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.